open anymore. What we got hiding back here now? All right. Oh, I see. All righty. All right. Kind of got quiet there. Somebody's supposed to be talking. Was it supposed to be me? I think it was. Audrey's done with her song. It's time for you to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Audrey's like, well, all right. Nobody said anything. I'll say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Glory be to God. Here we go. Glory be to God. Keep us on track. He's <laughs> a little distracted or something. All right. I think I'm almost with you. Keep doing That is really interesting. Uh, so, Roger, what you got going on Memorial Day, mother, uh, brother? Say a word or something. Somebody call in and talk on blog talk radio for a second um Wait, technology I'm, I'm, I'm having then? just a slight technology challenge here but i'm it's it'll be all right we got it i'm i'm cool i'm pretty good at yeah, you win you will win this <laughs> there it is i got it i won I got it. I got it. I got it. We welcome all of you from uh, Blog Talk Radio. I mean, Blog Talk Radio. Yeah, we welcome you. We welcome YouTube. And we welcome those of you on Face Stream Book Living. And stuff. And stuff. And uh, we're going to have a good day today. We're going to talk about honor. And we're going to talk about the, um, we're going to finish up. We're, well, we're not going to finish up. We're going to hit it again about um, to him who has more will be given. Hey, look at there. Christopher Andrew Dennis is with us. Hey. Good job, we Chris. We finally got a chance to listen to we your message We got a chance to listen night. to your message good. last night. And you did a good job of staying right on point, man. You did a really good job. Phyllis K. Raymond, we bless you in Louisiana. I don't know why I say it that way. I just always do. We've been praying for the rain to go away, did it? Everybody's going to reach up and grab their phone now, check the weather app. Whoops, where'd they go? They all disappeared. Yep, that's how that goes. Open up the weather app and everybody goes away. Come on, check that out. It That is just, thank you guys for your prayers. Because our prayers have been, you got to see this. Rain, find the states where there's a drought. Yes, amen. And that's exactly what our prayers have been. Find the state where there's a drought. And that is rain that's covering all of the state of North Dakota and all of the state of South Dakota. And it's going to be a nice, even saturation. And it's even covering Wyoming. And it's even covering Nebraska. Somebody give glory to God Almighty right there. Hallelujah. Move right on up that way. You ready? We're moving you right up that way, just like that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We speak over New Orleans. We speak over Lake Charles and Lafayette, Baton Rouge, and all them places. We declare rain, find a different route, so that these people are free From the flooding. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say it again. All creation. 
nature itself is longing for God's sons to be revealed in their sonship. And what is that? You and I know who we are and we tell this stuff, the devil let go of our storms and our weather and our life and our family and everything else. And can I get an amen from anybody? Amen. Amen. Nick three today. Praise the Lord. Oh, nice today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Nick three. I like that. Welcome to everybody that's with us on, on uh, Facebook and YouTube. We're glad to have you. It is, um, we're just kind of sitting here letting everybody get connected. And um, if you're still chewing on your chicken bone, don't talk with your mouth open, but you can type with your mouth full. <laughs> wait, wait, I messed that up. When you talk, you should always open your mouth. When you eat, you should always close your lips so that you can chew without spreading it everywhere. I'm going to check with a veterans organization. If nothing's going on in here in Michigan, I'll see my granddaughter and grandchildren and great grandchildren and talk about three aunties and uncles that served in World War II and talk about my brother and me who served. Well, there you go. There you go, brother. Bless you, Roger. What's everybody? Anybody else preaching again on fighting the good fight this Sunday? Come on. It's a good Sunday to preach that message because. We're going to be honoring all of those who fought the good fight. And paid that last full measure of devotion. And, um, you know, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, because of the anointing that's on your life. And not because of. Um, your great intellectualism, but because you're anointed to preach the gospel, Chris, draw on that anointing. And as you stand up and begin to minister, let the Holy Spirit of God use your lips and just speak that word, man. Speak the holy word of God every time you get in the pulpit, man. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do you love how God's kingdom works? Absolutely. Some of you do. The rest of you, you're still wondering about it, but it's okay. <laughs> Make sure if you join us, click that like button that we have your name. We can pray for you by name. Those of you that are part of what we do and you help us with verses and everything we do, thank you so much for making this program work like you do. Because... It is of absolute importance that um, we are the most powerful force we can be every time we come on here. And as everyone that's here learns how to add verses and copy and paste stuff and enter stuff, then it just makes this team a very powerful team. And doesn't matter who's here. We'll always have the bases covered and make things happen in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. You know, one of the highest honors you can ever have, Chris, is to minister the word of God. And, um, you know, shouldn't be taken lightly and should never be taken out as a place to beat the sheep or anybody else. Just minister the word that God gives you to minister. Brother John Hagee always said, study to have a good relationship with God and preach off the overflow. How are you doing, yeah. Leanne? Audrey wants to know how you're doing. Oh, I'm very good, Audrey. I'll flip the switch so the camera goes on her. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you for asking. She's a sweet heart. See, if you start out like that, then you don't have to have Brother Mike handing you ladders. <laughs> or chocolate bars or roses. But that's all right. We appreciate it when he does. Yeah. All right. Are we ready? We might as well get started. What do you think? There. 
It's 25 minutes after. You know, um, today at noon, we got talking about Memorial Day and what the day's all about. And um, we told a couple stories, talked about how you can be effective, how you can effectively um, make a difference in people's lives on Memorial Day. And, um, you know, it was a good program. I went through on YouTube and put a bunch of timestamps in. So if you go back and watch the YouTube video from today, you might be someone that has never found a place to express your patriotism in that. Um I would encourage you to go back and catch today's noon prayer, noon prayer time. Um, in the YouTube channel for today, I um, I have timestamps, and they're located in the notes of the program. So when you open up the video, if you click the little down arrow, that down arrow will show you the notes, which tells you our address and all the stuff about us. But right at the very top, you'll see these blue numbers that are um, timestamps. You know, let's say 03 dot, uh, colon 05 or something. If you click on that, it takes you right to that spot in the video. And uh, that way you can just watch the important parts of that video from that point of view. I think it's one of the things that YouTube does that I just love because it really makes that YouTube video then a very powerful force. And... The more of those timestamps we get in, the more people that it's blessed by. And um, that way you may not have the ability to um, sit down and watch the whole thing, but you can go right to the message part and be a part of that, you know, in the middle of a busy day, which is where we, where we eventually want to get this thing. That all of our videos will have that same process. And, uh, that's one of those things that I keep saying to everybody. If you really want to be a help and a blessing to us, that's something that anybody can do. And I can show you how. And you don't have to have any specialized anything. You can just do it yourself. I've not done it on my phone yet, but I would imagine you can probably do it on your phone. either, And you would be a major blessing and help to us in Jesus mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. Now. Let's rise and we'll get we'll we will honor our flag and make the pledge of allegiance and honor our troops and then we'll get right into today. Um, we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna talk about Memorial Day, but really not really Memorial Day. We're gonna talk about honor because honor is the very foundation of of everything you do in God. If honor is within you, then honor will come out of you. And if honor ain't in you, then honor ain't going to come out of you. And usually you had to have somebody put honor in you for it to be in you. You had to usually have it trained in you. And thank God for the people that do it. And then we're going to talk about it. It's going to say what Jesus said. And we're going to say what the Apostle Paul said, and it's going to be a good program tonight about honoring. Cool thing about this is it's Wednesday, and it's going to give you the ability to go and search um, in your community and find out what's happening on Monday Memorial Day, and then get out there and be a part of it. Hi to Sunday. Hi, Sunday. How are you tonight, ma'am? There you are, sweet friends. You know, every time Sunday says, hello, sweet friends, she's talking about me. <laughs> I'm so sweet, I can't stand myself. <laughs> and, and oh, the, you're so full of milk, Doug. <laughs> it's no wonder you're so sweet. <laughs> and the one guy said, and you're not stuck on yourself either, are you? <laughs> Don't have any pride in your family. You got it all. Tyler Perry said, oh, yeah, I see what your problem is. You have too much self-esteem. <laughs> you have a superiority complex. <laughs> Phyllis, we declare. 
declare your phone. We declare your works phone works tonight. Now. In the mighty Jesus name of Jesus. Name. In the mighty name of right Jesus. Now. Did we make it all the way to 730? We did. Yep. All right. It is Wednesday, 26 May, 2021. If you haven't realized it yet, the month of May is almost gone. And um, tonight, we're going to talk about honor and showing honor where honor is due. We'll talk about Memorial Day a little bit. And it's going to be a great, great program where you can learn how to help you go do something to make a difference in people's lives. And so, I encourage you to stick with us. It'll be an enjoyable time. Uh, if you got questions about last night's program, about how to be free from uh, prescription drugs or how to eat right, um, just ask me. I eat right. Which is a good plan. I like it. I eat right. I not only eat my lettuce and my cabbage, but I also eat meat and I bless it in the mighty name of Jesus. Here we go. Rise together with me. Render your honor. Let's make our pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we'll have a moment of silence as we remember those who are missing in action, those who've paid the last full measure of devotion, those who on this day may have uh, received a scar in the battle, in the soul, in their spirit, and in their body. And it's in honor of those who have faithfully served. This moment of silence will last for 21 seconds in honor of the 21 rifle volleys fired at the funeral of a fallen soldier. This moment of silence begins now. Now, join me in singing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountain to the prairie. To the ocean, white with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. <clears throat> and now, let's pray for the United States of America. God and Father of every brave warrior, down through American history, here we are again tonight. Men and women of God, sons and daughters of the great God Jehovah, Ministers of reconciliation, ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. We give you glory 
And we give you honor and we give you praise for who you are, for what you are, and for how you work in our lives every day. We thank you, Lord, that you are the same yesterday, the day the pilgrims knelt in the sand. All through American history to today, 26 May 2021. And forever until the trumpet sounds. We're off this old earth and they can have whatever they want until we get back. And then we're coming back with great power and great authority. Amen. And crushing our enemy. And living for a thousand years right here on this earth together with you reigning, Jesus. Wow, what a day. Looking forward to it already in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, as we do every night, we bow before you. And humbly admit that we, your people, need your help. And we say it again. Forgive us of our sin, Lord. Forgive those who sin in this land. Heal our land. Have mercy on us, Lord. We seek your face right here tonight again. We thank you. All across this nation and around the world, there is a network of prayer. There's a ring of prayer. There is a 24 hour a day, seven day a week prayer that is going on around the world and we connect to it right now in the name of Jesus. And according to Second Second Thessalonians chapter two, we stand in, live in, walk in, dwell in the dominion and the authority and the blessing and the strength of almighty God right here on this earth. And like you, Father, you mock at our enemy. You laugh him to shame because you know what you've already set up and he can't stop. And that is men and women of God all over this world praying right now. Today. Oh, they were wicked and sent COVID against us, but we were righteous and sent the name of Jesus against them. Hallelujah. And the name of Jesus has won all over the world. 99.5% recovery rate. And now we declare right now in the name of Jesus, life and life more abundantly to everyone who tonight is fighting a battle with it. We say life to you. Point at your local hospital, wherever it is in your area. Ours is right over there. And we're going to say, I declare life to the hospital. Life and life more abundantly. Not only healed from COVID, healed from everything. May the, may the rooms empty out tonight because people are just healthy, healed, and whole. Even though they don't know who we are that we're praying, we really don't care. Empty out the hospitals because... You have empowered us, your people, to speak your word. And we speak it right now. Say it with me. Thy kingdom come on this earth. Thy kingdom come on this earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Right here, right now today. Right here and right now tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Watch Jesus this. You name. and I take authority over the COVID numbers in your state. You ready? Point out the window and say, COVID, COVID, your power has already been stripped. Your power has already been stripped. And you are not only bowing to the name of Jesus. You are not only bowing to the name of Jesus. But we have crushed your head. That we have crushed your and head. everyone who bowed to your fear. And everyone that bowed to your fear. Will now be an absolute enemy. Will now be an absolute enemy. Of anyone that ever tries to do it again. Anyone that ever tries to do it again. Amen. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Say this with me. May all the businesses in my community, May all the businesses in my community completely recover. Completely recover. With great abundance. With great abundance. We bind every ship in the ocean. Find every ship in the ocean. It's trying to bring us something that we produce ourselves. It's trying to bring us something that we produce ourselves. Americans having jobs comes right now. Amen. In the mighty Jesus, name, name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Drill here. Drill now. Today. No matter what. Amen. We, we learn today at the noon prayer. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You have touched uh, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. Therefore, you're now going to face the retribution. Every pastor that you have, you have persecuted. You now have to pay seven times and double for the shame because God's people will never be put to shame. In the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> In the mighty name of Jesus. You brought shame upon the man of God. Therefore, and the woman of God. Therefore, you, you receive seven times and double for that shame. In your life and your name is removed from the history books. As someone who went down shamed after they had somewhat of what seemed to be a career. Because you have touched God's anointed. Want to do it? Just put your put your camera face up. You ready? Go like this. Go. I am the apple of his eye. I am the apple of his eye. I am. We are in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, one more prayer to pray. God bless all of the righteous politicians. May their voices be so bold. Let the wicked just turn to righteousness. May their voices be so bold that the enemy flees and leaves those who are corrupt just standing scared of the boldness of the righteous. And we say it again tonight. One hundred. Uh, um, what, what's the word that we said about the Supreme Court? They had a unanimous decisions. From the Supreme Court come day after day after day after day after day. Unanimous decisions Amen. that nobody can stop. And we declare the police and all of our leaders get behind and say, you're doing what's right right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And now, let's pray this, make this declaration that is the declaration to the isms. Did we get those words in there? All right. Everybody say it with me. It is pinned. If it pins it and you can't read it, then slide it up. Go up and get some post, and then you can sit up higher. <laughs> Somebody's like, I have to hold my phone up, Pastor? <laughs> <laughs> no. You scroll the comments till you can find where it was posted. And then you, get, you click see more. And there, that's where you, um, that's where you post it. All right. You can read it. Here we go. To all the isms. It is impossible to destroy the United States of America. You have no right or claim or historic authority to our promised land. We know who we are. We will not yield our weapons of protection to you. You may think we have been driven off, but we, the children of God, have returned to our God and have joined together in agreement to rebuild every wall that seems to be torn down in the realm of the spirit and in the natural. 
And we declare that every weapon you have formed against freedom comes back on you now. And every pit you have dug, you fall into it yourself in Jesus' name. Oh, immediately in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 144, 14. Our enemies will not invade our land and there will be no breach in our walls. These are the walls we are building. The walls of righteousness. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to see this. One puts a thousand to flight. Two puts 10,000 to flight. Three, we don't know. And 10, we really don't know. And watch, you and I, by our own strength, have reached up into the realm of the spirit and connected ourselves tonight with every organization that's producing a program just like that and are praying. And we got our, our prayers connected right in there. And therefore, the strength of the body comes in us and the strength of this body comes out of us and strengthens them in the mighty name of Jesus. There ain't no way the devil wins. You ready? Pray this with me. This is the Patriot Prayer of Dedication. Father, help us the living to be dedicated to the unfinished work which these fought for and so nobly advanced. Help us be dedicated to the great task that remains before us that from these honored fallen we take Increase devotion to the cause for which they gave that last full measure of devotion. And we highly resolve that these shall not have fallen in vain. And that this nation under God is experiencing a new birth of freedom right here, right now, today. And this government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Long will our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us, Lord, by thy great might, great God, our King. Forgive us of our sin, Lord, and heal our land. We, we seek, seek your, your face. face. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen and amen and amen. And I thank you. I thank you. Uh, I thank you for being here and joining us in faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Chris. Rich is with us. I don't know where you've been, young lady, but there's no excuses. We love you, Chris. Thanks for being here with us. It's always good to see you whenever you can get here, which is how this whole thing works. But the Dan Coddle's with us. Bless you, Dan. Rebecca Smith is with us all the way from Lansing, Michigan. Audrey Van Gessel, Phyllis K. Raymond, Roger Oxy's with us. Love you, love you, love you. You love you, love you. Oh, so she admitted there's no excuse. <laughs> you know, one of the smartest spiritual moves you ever make is just admit it. I was wrong. Hold it, hold it. I'm guilty. Just throws everybody right off. <laughs> Audrey's back. Yay. It's always good to see you, Chris. Glad to have you here. It's glad to have. We're glad to have you here. Yes. We speak over your family every day. We speak over your family every single day in Jesus' mighty name. Isn't that cool? It is. That you got a family that takes care of you even when you ain't there with them? That's because she brings donuts with her. Well, I don't see no donuts <laughs> or coffee yet, so um, she's kind of on thin ice right now. <laughs> she probably ran in her arms or fell. Oh, oh, all right, all right, all right. In the car. Hmm. 
All right. I don't know well, how you figure that out, Roger. Now, let's um, let's talk about uh, the community of faith a little bit. Um, we got lots of things that need to get done around here. And we're always looking for, for that, for that, for that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There's coffee and donuts. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I don't see them yet. How did you get them before I did? I was quicker. Oh, there you go. You saw your eyes are faster. Is that what you're saying? You don't have faster <laughs> eyes than I do. What's going on here? I still don't have them. No coffee and donuts. Right. Somebody that. send them to Brother Mike. He's been working hard. He probably needs coffee yeah, and no, donuts okay. tonight in Jesus' name. Now, Roger, you tried to send it to your, wasn't able to send to my contact information. All right. Well, we'll work on that. And don't stop asking us for it. A lot of things are going to be said and done tonight. And so um, it, you, I just can't stop and take notes on everything. So I would ask you to remind me, please, if we we got, we want to make sure we get, make it available for you in Jesus. Mighty name. Now, um, how many of you have been enjoying? What is that? Okay. What is he? He wants us to just send it in messenger. Is that? Hold it. That's not coffee and donuts. That's Ooh, cake and that's cookies. And cookies. Yeah. That's carrot cake with strawberries yeah. and cookies. You mean coffee and donuts. Hey, coffee Wilma Tony's with us. Wilma Tony's with us. Bless you, Wilma. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your help. Um, and uh, we really, really appreciate what you do. And as you send that stuff to us, I'm serious. It's This thing's going to all of a sudden explode into like the most awesome, fun discipleship process. And, and people are going to be just like, wow, look what's going on here. And all of us are going to be in the middle of it, making it work. And wow, could you, Pastor Sam, we can put a sign on your house, Pastor's Cafe. We have holy donuts. Wait, this morning or yesterday, sometime we came up with a name. The restaurant, liver and onions and fried green tomatoes. I think that's a really good name of a restaurant. And then when you get in, we won't have any of that, just hamburgers. <laughs> a big sign that says psych or what? <laughs> you open up the menu and they'll say, we got you. Just salad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That make a lot of people angry. <laughs> now. Now, let's get back to this, because the reason why I say that is um, there's a lot that, do, that needs to get done, and it's it's not difficult, and actually you get to study the messages some more, but as you're studying them, um, you're actually helping us to, to um, kind of edit, label, edit, label would be a good word, label, edit, um, the videos and and it really is a powerful force what we're going to what's going to come out the other end of it so i encourage you right now that um if you just consider it you might say all right let's do it i said i was going to have a meeting last week and it was going to be tuesday of this week well tuesday got by me already just had another good buddy invite me to live at his house well hallelujah the answers are coming for Brother Chris right now. So here's the deal. We'll pray for Chris in a minute. I'm, I'm saying that to you because if you got some time, you can be a blessing. And um, don't feel like it's something difficult because it's not. And I just, I encourage you. What does it do? It does several things. Number one, you go through the word again. Number two, um, you're helping somebody else have the simplicity and the ease. Number three, you're making our editing process and our discipleship process extremely simplified, which now you get all this blessing working in your life because you're doing the work of the ministry. Say it. I'm doing the work of the ministry. And I'm going to tell you something. Any day in the ministry is better than all your days out working in the world, unless that's your mission field. Amen. 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 
Now, if that's the case, please contact us. Say, all right, Pastor, I can help. Now, let's pray for Brother Chris again. We command this housing situation for Chris Timmer to move now in the mighty name of Jesus for doors to open <clears throat> and the blessing of the Lord to be with Brother Chris in the mighty name of Jesus, the blessing of the Lord. And, and we declare that the doors open and the understanding and the revelation of that understanding comes to him for not only him, but for his whole family to move into a house that is their own. And we declare a supernatural deal on a house comes to our brother right here, right now, even yet tonight, Amen. even yet tonight. Amen. And the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it will be with our brother and his family. And once again, by an infallible proof of almighty God, we say the revelation knowledge and the understanding comes to our brother and healing manifests from the inside out, from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And that healing virtue flows out of him into the lives of other, other people all around him. We give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise, Lord, Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Brother Roger said, I don't eat vegan. I'm a meat, potato, and vegetable kind of guy. Amen. Amen, Brother Roger. Amen. 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 Brother Roger. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, <clears throat> you know, not everybody has as much fun as we do. But it's all right. Not everybody can have this much fun because they ain't free and they're a bunch of pickle sucking persimmon heads. <laughs> Wow. I don't want to be a pickle sucking persimmon head. Now listen, I, I didn't cuss. None of that was a cuss word at all. All right. You you have to <clears throat> you have to have been sort of from the south to understand what that was all about, all right? You know what you call deer running by? Deer running by. Smoked venison. Ah. <laughs> ah. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's a good one. That's one of those pastor dad jokes right there. Hallelujah. That's a good one. That is a good one right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, let's see where are we at. It's now two minutes to eight. So it's time to get ourselves started. Now, let me say this again. Let me remind you that um, for those of you that are uh, looking for a good church, don't look anymore. You found one. I'll say it to you this way. The Father has led you here to be a part of this body. Thank you for being a part of the body and obeying the, and obeying the will of the Father. One of the things that you and I are really helping um, anybody that comes to us understand is God didn't make you part of a church. You are part of the church of the living God, but you are you have been placed in a body to make a difference there. First uh, Corinthians chapter 12, 13 and 14, all three of those chapters talk about that very specifically. Ephesians chapter four talks about it. And so um, what you're watching now is God build the body of Christ right here called the community of faith. It's a different kind of body than anything you've ever seen. All right. Um, I've never seen anything like this, but it don't matter. We, it's fun. It's, it's great. It's filled with word, anointing, strength, and power. And it ain't going to be long. And you're, we're going to have to have that prayer team going the whole time we're here because, well, look here. We have a caller tonight. 
Welcome, caller. We're glad to have you. Is it, fellas? All right. Well, fellas, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. God bless you. But here, here's why I say these words. Because before, in the mainline traditional way of religiosity thinking, we've said, um, well, you know, you got to be a part of a church. No, you need to be a part of the church, the ecclesia, and be connected to the body where the Father says be connected. Why? Because all the life flow is in that body where the Father said be connected. And breakthrough happens, understanding happens, peace happens, strength happens, deliverance happens. Everything you need happens right there in that body. And even when it's this body like we're doing right now, it's like this is the most interesting thing I've ever seen in my life. And we just grow and develop and we just keep reaching out farther and farther and farther and farther and being a blessing to many people. So Amen. having said all of that, um, the father has instructed you to sow seed here. sow seed. If this is the place you're calling your church home, you very much are welcome to tithe and actually should be tithing here. Tithing is one of the systems of God that disconnects you from the world system and hooks you into God's supernatural financial system. And um, it is a very, when you worship the Lord with your tithe, it is a life-changing, life-transforming event, and you're no longer bound by the world system. You now get to see God do his math in your life, and that is totally amazing in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we welcome you. All that information is in the in the um uh in the comments. Now, as you're sending, if you send a check, we would ask you to please put Pastor Sam at the beginning of the community of faith so it makes it easier for everybody to realize what's going on while we get this financial thing, all of it standing in order in the mighty name of Jesus. Um and Thank you for believing in this work. It's amazing yes. what God is doing. Yes. And you believe in us, we believe in you, and look at what God gets done through all of us. It's an absolutely amazing thing. In the mighty name of Jesus, this year is the year of a tsunami of his blessing. 2021, the year of faith, finances, and fun. A tsunami of my blessing. I love that. A tsunami of my blessing. And he said, prove me now in this. A tsunami of my blessing. Now, one of the cool things you learn as we do this is you learn to become very organized and you learn to remember what you saved your file as. And it is a learning process. <laughs> it is a learning process. <laughs> this year, this month's verse of the month is Revelation 21, verse 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. I have that already right here. <clears throat> and so I'm just I'm just saying this stuff. As a reminder of the focus that God has given us this year, 2021, the year of faith, finances, fun. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Father's fathomless love. That means he's going to keep doing things all year long to show you his love. And that's going to just continually break things open for you all over. I'm believing God helps every one of you get into some investments and some things that just explode and just pays off every debt. Don't you want to just be completely debt-free no matter what? I do. No more debt. Never another day. Never another day. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, thank you for being a part of what we're doing tonight. Um, now, Brother Chris, I'm not sure... If you're talking about at the restaurant called Fat Bob's, they're barbecuing ribs there. 
FB tonight. What's up with FB tonight? It's a it's a Chicago joint downtown. Just jump a cab and get over there. They got really good ribs. Okay, I had <laughs> I had seen it doing some stuff too, but I was thinking maybe it was just me because nobody else was saying. Anything. All right, now everybody said all of our technology, all of our technology function properly, function properly in the mighty name of Jesus. In the in the mighty name of Jesus. We'll pop that in there and we'll make that confession real quick here in just a minute. In Jesus' mighty name. Are you ready? Hey, we got we got somebody else. We got two folks with us now on um, Blog Talk Radio tonight. Well, we might have a question and answer session. Caller number one will ask the questions and caller number two will answer them. <laughs> 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 and, huh, we don't have any more callers on Blog Talk Radio. I wonder what happened. Hey, you guys come back. Please come back. I just love it. I love what God's doing with this gathering of believers. I really do. This body of Christ, he is building his church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and so tonight we're going to go to a couple different references and we're going to start out tonight in Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 through 20 so if you will grab in your your, your, your Matthew 16, 16, 13 through 20, in the mighty name of Jesus. Chris, there's two restaurants you have to visit when you're in Chicago. Oh. One, three. Yeah, that pizza place, too, is amazing. Oh, four. <laughs> Rosebud on Rush downtown is amazing. It's right by the Lamborghini dealer. It's amazing. And then you got to get to Portillo's. Yes. You got to get there. And the one I know about is in Forest Park. I'm not sure how many of those are. And then, what's that? Joe's Rib Shack? What's that thing called? Joe's Chicken? Oh, JJ's. JJ's. Fish and the Chips the or yeah. something. Yeah. Got to get there. And then the pizza place is called, oh, I can't ever remember. but we don't know, but we'll tell you where to find it because it's really good. We'll just meet you there and then we'll go to church. We'll meet you there. Take you out. Tell them, that's it. I'm out the door. I'm going with my friends to eat. And to church. And to church. We got to go to Dr. Winston's. All right. There. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Now, um, everybody just speak this confession with me right now here. This is how we deal with this. You may not have ever made confessions like this, but I'm going to tell you something. This solves the prayer meetings you used to go to where they would call on Brother Bill back there. Brother Bill, will you please stand and pray? Jesus, I don't know who you are, but thank you that you're somebody. And I pray you bless all these other buddies and amen and have everything good. Amen. You got to get more focused on your prayer than that. And you don't know who I'm talking about, so don't be offended. <laughs> Why do we do these confessions? Because it focuses all of us on the same words. And when we proclaim them into the atmosphere, the angels go to work hearkening to the voice of God's word. And things happen. You ready? Say this with me. We declare all of our equipment and technologies function properly every time we come together because we are walking in the righteousness of Jesus. From Genesis 1, 26 through 28, we are fruitful, we multiply, we subdue the earth, we take dominion of our internet signal, of our electronic devices 
and every satellite that is necessary to make it work. We <clears throat> dominion of all three platforms. Lost my place. Keep going. Facebook, YouTube, YouTube and, and blog talk, talk radio. radio. And, and we, we declare you, you will function properly every time we turn you on. And, and everything we do as a ministry succeeds, succeeds. unhindered, unchecked by any outside force. Thank you, Jesus, for your example that you dominated all realms of authority all throughout your ministry, and we walk in your footsteps now. We declare a perfect program today and every day to the glory and honor and praise to the powerful name of Jesus and to his righteousness that we have been made into. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And I want to do some editing on that just to make it as a statement for you and me to hear and say, we'll do it. I think Chris is trying to sing a song from Frozen. <laughs> I think he is too. Hallelujah. Bless you, Chris. Sing, buddy, sing. Here we go. Now, Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came and to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? I, the Son of Man, am. And they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell, Hades, shall not prevail against it. Watch. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Say it with me. I have the keys. I have the keys. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. Jesus has given unto you and me the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That whatever you bind on this earth right here, right now, will be bound by the authorities of heaven. Whatever you loose here. And there's only one way you can loose something here. And that's with your tongue. There's only one way you can bind something here. And that's with your tongue. What are you going to do? Carry around a whole trunk full of rope and bind people and bind things? You can't do that. No, you can't bind a spirit with a rope. They're a spirit. They'll just go right through the rope. So the idea is he's talking about binding things on this earth. You don't bind people. You don't take dominion over people. You might take dominion over a wicked person so they don't do anything to you. But we're not to be dominating any human anywhere, anytime. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. So here's the thing. Jesus gave us authority on this earth. <clears throat> 
just because you may have never been around somebody that exercised that authority doesn't mean that it's not real. And doesn't mean <clears throat> that you shouldn't be very focused to learn how to dominate an authority on this earth in Jesus' mighty name. Which is one of those things that we do here. Mary Fernandez Ambrose. All the way from Singapore. Hello, hello. Everybody, pray for our sister right now. Father, in Jesus' name, her desire to do the work of the ministry and to bless people with faith and the word of faith that's burning in her heart and that fire of God that's on the inside of her. In the name of Jesus, open up those doors, Jesus, for a, a group of the hungriest believers she's ever met in her life to be able to bless them and encourage them and strengthen them in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare, as we have said, no, we thank you, Lord, that all the effects of the stroke are gone. Yes, all of it's gone. And all of her organs, cells, tissues, blood veins, vessels, heart, lungs, everything, every organ functions properly right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And this giant in the faith now lives in, walks in, and dwells in great faith every day of her life in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak it right now. We bless Valma Welch. We bless Joy and Mikey and and um, Natalie and Nicole and Claire. Claire and Claire. Not sure who Natalie and Nicole are, but there's somebody that probably lives close to you, Velma. So keep watching for him. You might get him saved. the mighty name of Jesus, every bit of stroke is gone. I We declare in Mary Fernandez's body, she's so strong, she goes jogging. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, tonight's message, tonight's study, tonight's teaching Tonight, hallelujah, we're all together, is going to come from the book of Romans, chapter 13. And I want to talk about this week. We spoke a little bit about it in the morning program. That's a good one. If you like to uh, do things for the troops, I encourage you to go back and listen to it again. It's got timestamps in the notes where you can go in there and and go right through the message in special ways and listen to the parts that's just about uh, Memorial Day. But um, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. We're going to do tonight. All right. We're going to read about honor from God's word. We're going to talk about honor that you and I get to do and how you can find something in your community. So Monday during Memorial Day, you're doing something. And you're out of your house being a blessing to somebody somewhere. Amen. Amen. Because every one of us have that ability on the inside of us. Now, Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. I'm speaking to my computer and it's just putting it all up by oh. audio text. I'm speaking that in faith. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Showing honor where honor is due is the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. That's our duty. Romans 13, verse 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 14. Ready? Read. Let every soul be subject. To the governing authorities. For there is no authority. 
except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be afraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he's God's minister to you for good. If you do evil, then be afraid. Have you ever noticed when you're speeding down I-75 or your local interstate, and you're just you're taking it right down the road, and all of a sudden there's a police officer sitting in the middle, how fast you get a conscience? <laughs> Now, I don't do that. That's something that Sister Leanne does. I just I just maintain the speed. Now, when, she, when she's by herself, she don't even slow down. You know. No, as we got to realize, you, you don't have to worry. This is one of the most simple doctrines that solves all the hatred and all the violence of our land. Right now, simple way. If you don't do bad, you don't have to worry about the cops. That's true. You won't go to jail if you do good. Now, they might, they, this year they put some people in jail for having church, but those people are being rebuked and corrected by Almighty God, and they're, they're losing their positions. Because God don't mess with it. When you mess with God's anointed, God's going to take you out. And there ain't no other, you can't get out of it. Wow. It's a blessing to know you too, Mary. Verse five, therefore you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you pay taxes. Can you believe those words are even in the Bible? <laughs> because of this, you also pay, pay taxes. For they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their due. Watch this. Taxes, to whom taxes are due. Customs, to whom customs are due. Fear, to whom fear is due. And honor, to whom honor is due. Isn't that interesting? It is interesting. That God put honor amongst a bunch of thieves like taxes. <laughs> what is he saying? To be a good citizen where you live and what you're doing. Render, render therefore to all their due. Taxes, to whom taxes are due. Customs, to whom customs are due. And honor, to whom honor is due. It's one of the things that's interesting to me about the church. People go into church looking like sloppy people that living on the living on the uh, and uh, they 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 don't have no care about what they look like when they go to church. Well, this says to show customs to whom custom is due, and honor to whom honors due. You know, you don't get in the White House. To see the president with ratty jeans. Right? But we we wear ratty jeans on the pulpit representing our God. The great God Jehovah. And our Jesus. Wow. Pastor, you're like preaching about clothes or something. No, I'm preaching about honor. honor. Amen. I'm preaching about honor. Some of the most... Powerful services of honor is when you see people that are dressed in an honorable way to the king of glory. It's amazing when you compare the difference. I encourage you, start watching. Start watching because there's a whole new level of honor. Try to get into, try to get into White House looking like a shabby street kid. That ain't going to work. It's, it's not that's not doing wrong. It's every echelon of life 
has responsibility and a requirement to be there. That's why some of you in your executive type jobs, you you, you weren't even allowed to wear jeans. You had to like pay five bucks on a Friday or something to wear blue jeans. Why? Because that's not the image of, that that business had. Nothing wrong with it. It's not bondage. It's not doing anything. It is learning. There's echelons of life. And if you want to be there and be in it, you got to function according to that echelon. Now, isn't that honor, honorable and amazing? Mm -hmm. Right? Let's keep going. Verse 8. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves one another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments say, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covenant. And if there is any other commandment, all are, all are summed up in this saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I think that's a really good line to circle right there. All are summed up in this saying, saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 10, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. See, Jesus said, I have come to fulfill the law. He said, all of the law and the prophets are summed up in these two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. All of the law, that's Genesis to Deuteronomy. And all of the prophets, <laughs> that's Isaiah through Malachi, is wrapped up in two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Wow. Verse 11, did you get that? And do this, knowing the time, and do this, knowing that the time, huh. Matthew, and do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, what's that mean, Pastor? That means Jesus is closer to coming back right now than he's ever been. Your salvation being rescued from this earth. Well, actually, it's not rescued. I don't like that word. It's being caught up, raptured away to be with Jesus, having brought this world into subjection to Jesus and to his kingdom and brought the kingdom to this earth. God, everybody would say we could. And the father goes, do, do, do. and we all, they, the trumpet toots and we all scoot. Amen. Amen. For 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Now, I read all 14 verses just to prove I can do it. <laughs> Our verses for tonight is verse number seven. 
Render therefore to all their due. Taxes to whom taxes are due. Customs to whom customs is due. Honor to whom honor is due. So I'm going to just use this verse from this con this point of view tonight. Render therefore to all their due. Honor to whom honor is due. Render honor to whom it is due. Not changing the word, just taking out some words so we can grab this phrase and this phrase, which are already connected, and put them together. Render honor or show honor to where honor is due. Now, today at lunch, we talked about um, what Memorial Day is all about. Okay. And I encouraged everybody at lunch today to learn how to honor our troops and veterans and then find a way to go get busy and do something in your community. There's no reason you always have to be sitting on the sideline and not being part of the blessing. Say this with me. I have feet that go. I got hands that help. I got, a, I got arms that hug. Amen? And you can go and be a blessing. <clears throat> let's, let's talk about your local Memorial Day um, um, event. I don't know. It's, we shouldn't call it a celebration. You don't celebrate when people die. All right? And in our little town of West Branch in Michigan, they had uh, a, an event where people came and they sat around and they honored the names of all the veterans who that year had, had passed. And I think it was a very honorable thing to do. And uh, they would always have somebody sing the Star Spangled Banner. Remember um, Mrs. Munn? She, she had one of those operatic soprano voices and she just, Whoa! it was just awesome. I love it. I love to hear it. It's, it's not how I sing except for right then, but it was just an amazing little program. But here's why I'm saying this to you. Do you know that not very many people volunteer for some of these things in some places? Do you realize that the veterans usually have to do it all themselves all the time? And how much they would enjoy having somebody come and be a part of it with them? You might say, Pastor, I don't even know what I do. Well, go to Myers or Walmart and buy you just a package of those 12 flags and those stick flags, and just take them to the event and hand them out to people. Would you like a flag? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then tell them. And when you're done at the end, if you want to bring it back to me, I'll take it and I'll I'll take good care of it. What have you got? Now you got 12 flags. Anytime there's something patriotic, you got some flags to go hang up. And it'll be a blessing to you. And what are you doing? You're making a difference for people's lives. Now, I also said this morning, and I'm going to say it again, probably clear till the end, or till the end, all the way to Monday, all right? And that is, if nothing else, stay late. Let everybody go home, and you take a garbage bag with you and go around and pick up all the droppings that happen while people are in the crowd. There'll be, there'll be a Kleenex laying here. You know, take you some rubber gloves if you're afraid, and, and pick up all the things, you know, that people leave behind. What you just done? You just was a blessing to the community. And what are you doing? You, you are showing honor in your own way. And, and they'll look at you and say, who are you? And do you want to do more things to help us do what we do? That's what they will say. Why? Because they want more, more of us civilians to get out there and help them do what they do. Now, don't try to get the mic and stand up in front of people and take over the show. That is not your place. All right. And you always have to say that because there's always somebody that's that's a that's a mic hog, that's a camera hog, that's a video hog, and they always want to be up in front of people. Don't do that. Don't do that. Did you hear me? Don't do that. <laughs> Wait, why are you saying it, Pastor? Because the whole point of what this program is going to be, you'll be a part of on Monday, is showing honor for the fallen. Memorial Day 
is about the fallen. Armed Forces Day, which was last Saturday, is about those serving in the armed forces. Veterans Day is about the men and women who have served in years gone by. They're now called veterans. Fourth of July is when we celebrate the birth date of the United States of America. Fourth of July is a huge celebration. I say it again tonight. The families that have lost a loved one, it's not a celebration. Now, some of them will be at a point where they know their loved one's in heaven and they'll rejoice and that'll be a good thing. And the most important thing you can ever do is this. Tell me the story of your loved one. Because very few people ask him the question. What are you doing? Showing honor where honor is due. And what is it that most people who have lost a loved one in a war, what is it they want to do the most? And is tell the story of the one that they love. And the revelation of it is this. Every one of us have two ears that can listen. If we will get ourselves out of the way and put somebody else first and show love like we just read right here in the book of Romans chapter 13. Showing love is our responsibility. It's so cool to have somebody praying over me every day. I will return it and pray for you guys every day. Two I do bless. Two I do bless. Two I do bless. Every day, two. I do bless you. I got it. Every day in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. and amen. Thank you. Velma and Audrey and Wilma and any of the rest of you that say, Pastor, I got a couple hours. I can help you do something. Then let's have a meeting. It can either be tonight at midnight or, or tomorrow afternoon or the next day. Uh, shoot me a time when it'd be good for you in the day, during the day, and we'll put it together and all of us get together and we'll talk on a Zoom call or something and or maybe just a messenger call, and we'll get a plan going how we can put all this together. It'll be a blessing yeah. in Jesus' mighty name. Monday, we will not have noon prayer because we will be at a Memorial Day event. All right? We want you to be out there making making something happen wherever you go. We're, we're going to have quite an event here. Probably we'll gain some national news. The uh, first monument, I have to get my beauty sleep. <laughs> well, Wilma, just so you know, you're a very beautiful lady. Yes, you are. I was just going to say that. We think you're beautiful. I, I didn't know if Sister Nam was going to hesitate, so I said it for her just in case. But you're <laughs> very. We get it. We're not going to keep you up. Wait, your sleep must be working. <laughs> We're going to start looking pretty ratty. Here. <laughs> oh, we love you guys. Listen, Mary Fernandez, you're a blessing to us. And Audrey Van Gessel, you're a blessing to us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's grab another verse of scripture. Would you like another one? Because I don't usually just give like 13 verses in uh, one night. I usually like to give a whole bunch of verses. Thank you. <laughs> it is. She she's very beautiful. Proverbs 21 21. He who follows righteousness. Finds life, righteousness, and honor. He who follows righteousness 
and mercy. Say it. Well, that would be me. Well, that would be me. That it is me. It should be you too. He who follows righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and honor. Isn't it cool that God has honor stored up for you and I? As we are chasing after him, you find life. We were talking about that last night. And you find righteousness. Well, let's ask the question, who is life? Jesus is life. When you sow the word into your heart, you're sowing Jesus on the inside of you. Wait. When you sow the word inside your heart by speaking it with your mouth, you sow the inspired word, Logos, written word of God, which is inspired by the Holy Spirit, given by the Father, and lived out by Jesus. You speak all of that life in through your body and through your life. I wonder sometimes how it is we ever even die. I really honestly believe that if we really see the truth about the word of God, we ain't never going to die. Yeah. You would live to be, you'd live to be like the patriarch. You'd live to be 175, 180 years old. Why? Because you're the word of God is just rolling through you. And you and I, we've got Jesus, God, and the whole, the Jesus, the father and Holy spirit living on the inside of us. Yeah. Yeah. That. Look at Velma wants to sing the frozen song. Go ahead, go ahead, sing it. Somebody sing it. I don't know it. I've never even seen the movie. I've seen people stand and be singing from it, but yes. Chris and Velma could sing it together. Chris and Velma sing it together. Frozen back. That's a new song. I don't know that one. <laughs> now, let's go Proverbs chapter 3. Let's look at this one. She's talking about honor a little bit. But this is what I want you to do. There is honor on the inside of every one of you. You know why? Because God is filled with honor and his word is filled with honor. Oh, well, that's right. Mikey wouldn't be singing that Frozen song yet, uh, be singing that. But it will come real quick with Claire. He'll be singing it. She'll be dressed in frilly outfits. You'll be having frost all over the house. I don't know why, but I see that happening in many places with young children, girls. Proverbs chapter 3, let's go down here to verse number uh, 13. Happy is the man or woman who finds wisdom. I like wisdom, don't you? Wisdom is the principal thing. That's why in every situation, you got to just stop and look for a minute and say, wait a minute. What is the wisdom point that's happening in front of my eyes right now? Keep going. And the man who gains understanding, he's happy. Well, that's what makes us around here so happy mm -hmm. because we are always getting the wisdom of God and it, 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 it. <laughs> Kathy Angaroni's not even here to say, Pastor, you're studying, stuttering, right? And the man who gains understanding, verse 14, for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver. Wisdom, understanding. Oh, there you can't see <laughs> Wait. Wait. Uh, 
I don't know where I lost you, Velma, but I wasn't trying. And I was trying to be funny or something. So don't worry about it. We'll back up and hit it again. Just ask me another question. <laughs> Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than five gold. Wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Got her just in time. <laughs> it's, no, it's because you showed up, Kathy, that I start st 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 stuttering. Stutter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be all right. Watch this. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. And all things that you may desire cannot compare to her, to wisdom. Watch this. Length of days is in her right hand, wisdom. In her left hand is riches and honor. Wisdom, which is the practical application of this word. Wisdom and understanding come together. And in the right hand of wisdom is length of days. And in, the, and in her left hand is riches and honor. So what does wisdom do? Length of days, riches and honor. And they're right there with you every moment of your day. You might say, well, pastor, I wasn't even seeking riches. No, it'll be the automatic byproduct. Wisdom and riches and honor will be the automatic byproduct of you gaining knowledge, understanding, and wisdom according to the word of God. Why? Because everywhere you go, you're going to be speaking the words of wisdom the words of life Amen. and everybody around you is going to be like, wow, you really got an understanding of this. And you'll say, well, it comes from the word of God that we study diligently by the Holy spirit of God. Every time we come here, every time we come here and you know, it's one of those things. Why that, that I spent the time today and I want to spend the time right now for the next few minutes talking about Memorial day. I had several people today after the program say to me, thank you for that program because I really didn't know what to do. And you actually answered some of my questions so that I knew what to do. Isn't that an interesting thing? And and I want you to be empowered to be a blessing in your community. If you're bold enough, that everybody's different. And I'm not trying to make anybody something that you're not supposed to be. If you're bold enough, you can just go right up to the, to the VFW hall and say, hey, what are you guys doing? How can I be a blessing to you? Believe me, they will have something for you to do, most likely. Unless you have a huge veteran community and they don't they don't want your help or something. But, and there are a few of those around, but most generally they always have something for you to do. Why are you saying this, Pastor? Because it's one of the simplest ways that you can begin to be a blessing to people in the community. And then you find out there's a Vietnam vet that's had a leg, a leg amputated. And nobody goes and visiting. And now you just found a ministry. Where you can go and be a blessing to somebody. There's a really huge hole. <clears throat> There's a really huge hole here. Hold on, I got to show you something. I was at a funeral of a fallen soldier one day. And I don't know if you've ever seen these. These are called challenge coins. And 
um, the leaders in the military will carry these in their pocket. They give them to the men who served with them. And it's a reminder of their time of service. And usually it'll say on there what it's about. This one is from um, Major General Larry L. Twitcher, Twitchell. And um, he served in the military from 65 to 2007. And he's a two-star general, all right? He presented this coin to me on the day that we honored Bo Schembechler, the great University of Michigan football coach. Bo Schembechler was um, World War II age. And when it came time for Bo Schembechler to sign up for the military, they're like, you're a good coach. We don't need you in the battlefield. Stay home and train the men that are still here how to play football. And that was literally his duty as an as a United States soldier in the United States Army. And many people didn't know about it. This general found out about it. I was state captain then, and see, he said, I want you to be, can you make this, can you set it up? I was actually the one that got to present the plaque to Bo Schembechler's second wife. It was a pretty honorable day. And Bo Schembechler was one of my favorites. Um, ball player or you know coaches I I wouldn't call him a hero because my heroes are men who wear uniforms and face the wicked enemies of the day not somebody chasing the ball however he's a good coach but so this is a challenge coin that's what that's all about all right now I was presented this one and this one looks a little more rough so I showed you the other one um, first all right. This one was presented to me on the day I was in Traverse City, Michigan, at the funeral for uh, Sergeant Dylan Fox. Beautiful, beautiful, bright, cool April day when we honored Dylan's life and his service. After the funeral was finished and we honored the family and everything, the family insisted that we come to the VFW Hall and eat a meal with them. And so we did. You know, we, we didn't always do that because, you know, you ended up going to a lot of me. We, we know who makes the best food, church food. The Patriot Guard does. We know who makes the best food because uh, we've been there. But anyways. So. Everything's done and me and a couple guys are getting ready to leave. And this general walks up to me. And he shake, he reaches his hand out to shake my hand. He says, young man, I heard you're the one in charge around here. I said, yes, sir, I'm the state captain. And he has this coin in his hand. And, of course, he shakes it, and it, now it's in my hand. And I can feel it, and I'm like, uh-oh. I'm now paying attention in a great manner because this general has a hold of my hand, and he ain't letting go. All right? And um, this is a coin for excellence, all right? This guy was in charge of all the contractors who were serving in Iraq. And he was the general over that part of the military. Now, now listen to the statement that he made to me. I said, thank you, sir. I, I was quiet. The thing you got to learn to do when you're around the big, the bigger brass is be quiet because sometimes your mouth wants to run. All right. That's just your natural human tendency. You get nervous and stuff and your mouth wants to run. So I just, I was just, I just got quiet and listened. And he looked me right in the face and he said one of the most interesting things I've ever heard. He said, the Patriot Guard Riders, which is the organization I was the state captain of has done what nobody else has been able to do effectively in American history. And I said, and what is that, sir? He said, the military by nature, especially during a period of combat, has to move. We got a focused goal. We know where we're going. 
and we've got to move and you can't stop because you don't want the enemy to get in, in front of you. Nobody can encroach on you. The person who's got the best offense puts everybody else on the defense. So he said, by nature of that process, we have many families and veterans that fall through the cracks. And he said, you guys have effectively gotten the American civilian involved to care for the veterans and their families. That's a powerful statement, isn't it? That's why I'm spending this time tonight with you saying, don't hesitate to get involved. I'm not telling you to ask them if you can sing a song or read a poem. Maybe you want to. I don't know. But the idea is they got lots of work and lots of things they want to do. And it will amaze you how fast they would call you up and say, would you please come help us today? And what a blessing that would be to you to have somebody, a group of people that you're blessing, especially somebody like the veterans who have served in Vietnam and Korea. I mean, most World War II veterans are now have now gone to heaven because of the age. But now we're going to be dealing with the Korea veterans and the Vietnam veterans. And it's a wonderful place to serve because they're loving people. And they served on purpose to protect and defend and make America great. Don't That's not a Trump statement. And make America great for you and me. They were willing to go face what was then seen as an enemy. Whether history shows it as an enemy today or not, what are you going to do? It was seen as an enemy on that day. And they were serving for the purpose of protecting and defending. Have you ever noticed that history always tells the truth about whether a combat action was necessary or not? Yeah, yeah. And when you realize it really wasn't as important as what they were saying, and you wonder, well, here's the reality. I'm not trying to get you to become some big person in the community. I'm just telling you that more than likely, there's some stuff in your local community you could do to be really truly be a blessing to people. Now, and what? God honors them. And what? God honors them. And now Sister Leanne is going to teach the rest of the, rest of the program. <laughs> and see, and right. And God honors that. Why? Because you're showing honor to whom honor is due. Watch this. It's now going to give you a place and a person where you can exercise the love and the prayers that you're learning to pray right here. Yeah. It's going to give you somewhat of a purpose if you don't have one. If you already have one, it'll give you another group of people that you can just reach out to and be a blessing to. You're not starting a big ministry. You're not like Brother Mike running, heading into the tent city where all the drug addicts are there, right? And, and there's nothing wrong with that, Brother Mike. If you're with us, I don't know. He's working really hard right now. But And there's there's nothing wrong with that. But I don't see Sister Rebecca Smith charging yeah. down into Tent City saying, I'm going to go in there and kick yeah. butt and take names. Yeah. That is not everybody's. That's not everybody's thing. Yeah. But I encourage you. This is one of those things that can truly be a blessing to people. It truly is a blessing. And it's a great way for you to show honor where honor is due. Remember what Jesus said. Let's actually look at it. Matthew chapter 5. Is this good tonight? I think this is different than today at noon. Matthew chapter 5. And let's go to. Verse number eight, I think. No, nine. Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. 
for they shall be called the children of God. Well, that's not just that's not just the peace wanners, that's the peacemakers. Blessed are the ones who get involved making the peace. And look at what Jesus said. For they shall be called the children of God. That's a pretty high honor. Now, go with me to Mark chapter 10, verse 29. Let's go to, uh, yeah, 29 and 30. Jesus answered and said to Peter and the disciples, Surely I say to you, there is no one who has left, all right? So I'm going to change the negatives. Listen to this verse. Surely I say to you, everyone who has left house or brothers or mother, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospel. They will receive a hundredfold return now in this time, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, lands, persecution, and look at what it says. And in the age to come, eternal life. Well, you might say, Pastor, these guys are soldiers. They're going to war. That's not for the sake of God and Jesus, except what is the foundation of the throne of God? Liberty and justice for all. You look at Jesus' assignment on, um, on, uh, in Luke chapter 4, verses 17, 18, and 19. What does Jesus' assignment say? Jesus' assignment says, you and I are going to give liberty to the captives. Now, if you're a part of a communistic army, none, then no, you're, God's not going to bless them at all. You're not. You are, if, you, if you are, you might be like Ingolf Schmidt, who was a part of the uh, Germany, who was part of the SS. <laughs> If you've never heard Ingolf Smith's story, he's he is literally stationed, he's positioned at Checkpoint Charlie between East and West Germany, which is you got the killing field yeah. between there, anybody trying to escape, get to freedom. His commander came in the room with him and said, I want to know, Ingolf, somebody's seen running across that barrier right there what are you gonna do and he said i'm supposed to say shoot him dead he said i'm gonna drop my gun and join him that's what he said to the guy <laughs> and he escaped really yeah yeah see what we don't realize is how much god loves the peace maker Sister Velma's husband was one of those men who are considered a peacemaker. He was a sheriff deputy. And so there's a promise there. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called the children of God. John chapter 15 You might say, Pastor, I know some veterans that are really sinful and awful. Yep. Yep. And aren't you glad you're not the judge? Yeah. And you know, some of them struggle so badly with the things that they saw in war and with guilt. And a verse like that can set them free. And a if verse like that. Somebody knows sure. that verse to say to them. And a verse like that can set them free. Mm. Some of these men were required by the command to do horrible things. And 
there's a lot of cautions to use in this. But to look at him and say, let me say a prayer, a blessing to you and for you. is just completely received. Don't invite him home to your house. Yeah. Understand the guilt. One of the worst guilts that any of them in combat face is called survivor's guilt. They don't know why they survived and their buddies didn't. It's, it's a serious, it's a serious process of war, which is why I'm so diligent every day to go and make these videos and put them up and honor our troops because it is a serious process of combat that people who survive are just feel guilty about it. I don't know why I survived and my buddies didn't. Well, there's a reason you survived and that is you're going to tell their story yeah. and never stop telling that story. Name their names. Tell people about them. Tell them what they were like in combat. Tell them how much they did for you and they blessed you. And don't be guilty. And don't feel guilty. Now, there's some people who did wicked things in war. And what you and I need to do with them is to bring the mercy and the grace and the reconciliation of Almighty God. He will not impute your sins against you. And I've seen it over and over and over with veterans that all of a sudden realize, wait a minute, you mean God loves me? Yes, he loves you. And their whole life transforms immediately. And guys, I'm not trying to put you in a, in a veteran ministry. I'm just saying it gives you the opportunity to pray for people mm -hmm. if you're there where they are. Wait, wait. Don't go down to the VFW bar every night to minister to them. No, there's plenty of things in every community to do. If this is something that's close to your heart, that isn't getting you in the bar where they're all drinking and drunk. Am I making sense? John chapter 15, verse 13. Look at this verse. Greater love has no man than this then he would lay down his life for his friends. Jesus said, the, the, one of the greatest loves you'll ever see is someone who will lay their life down for their friends. Wait. And then he gave us the example and laid his life down for a friend, for you and I. Ready? Ready? And defeated the worst enemy there's ever been, Satan. Why? Because he was sinless. And when he entered hell, he destroyed all of its power that it would try to have over you and I. And the only power that hell has today is deception. If you won't be deceived, you won't be defeated. Amen. That's why this program is so important in the end times like this. Guys, we, we may never, let me say this, see how to say this, Jesus. How do I say it? What God is doing here is one of the most interesting things I have ever seen. I have never been a part of anything that has continually gone forward this many days in a row on, 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 um, in, not interrupted. We're on like day 430. Uninterrupted. Well, Pastor, how in the world are we doing that? Just don't worry about it. And just, just everybody just be here and do what you do whenever you get there and do what you do. Why? It ain't no glory to us. Ain't no human in their, in their right mind does this. But see, as the day comes to a close, it becomes more and more important. Mm -hmm. Let's look at one more verse. I'm checking to see in the realm of the spirit if this is my last one. Hebrews 10, 25. Now, here's the next thing that you're going to be able to see happen in what's going on. Mary Pastor Rick's here. 
Bless you, Mary. Pastor Rick, we love you. We love you too, Don. And all the kittens. <laughs> yeah, how many kittens do you have left? Now watch. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Eh. Let's go clear to 19 through 25. Oh, no. Father, in Jesus' name, whoever Mary had to be a part of today, we bless that person. We bless Mary's life. We declare right now in the mighty name of Jesus, life and life more abundantly to the family and to Mary, to all of the friends in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say amen or amen something. Amen or something. Hebrews 10, all right, Hebrews 10, 19 through 25. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, his flesh was the, was the deal that his broken body and his blood shed wiped out the veil of the temple and made it so you can enter in. Having a high priest over the house of God, Jesus. 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed, and literally the word is purged with pure water. 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope. There's that word, Brother Dan, hope, mm -hmm. without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Say this with me. I have love, I have love. and it's going to produce good works. Good work. Amen? Amen? Wait a minute. Some of you might say, um, I'm not a part of anything, but I know how to cook. Well, every time there's a veteran funeral, maybe you need to be a person that's there with a dish. And all of a sudden, it's not a Baptist thing anymore. <laughs> no, what is it? You're stirring up love and good works being a blessing to those men and those women and those families. And you never know who you're going to be able to pray for. And you know how many veterans would like to belong to a, 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 a teaching situation where they could learn about God, but they're afraid to go into a church. But this situation we have right here is exactly what they need. Why? Because they get just like Roger Oxley. They get to come here, learn everything about God. And an environment that feels safe to them because they get in a building in a large crowd and many of them feel that that, that PTSD and and um, and that sixth sense that they learned in combat. It's a very interesting thing that goes on with them. And if anybody does that, I'm going to make up some packets with prayer clause to send to um, Roger for some veterans that he's dealing with. If anybody else wants packets like that. To give them, there will be verses and the communion things in it with the prayer clause. Now, Let if you didn't hear what through. Sister Leanne was saying, because she wasn't in her broadcast voice, send her a text and she'll call you on the phone and tell. You. <laughs> My voice carries. Very now, well. um, what she's saying is, we will be glad to bring to you and help provide for you prayer clause and um, some verses of scripture and things to be a blessing to people. And think about how many of these people you can connect right here. The day will come when this program will be have grown so much that we'll have groups that'll be a veterans group, a group that'll be a, a, a truck drivers group, group that'll be a secretary group or, you know, 
We're not trying to divide people off like that, but it's one of the things that happens and people of, of like, like-mindedness always fellowship very easily together. And that's one of the things why we want to get all of this discipleship process put down into a teachable force to be a blessing to people out there everywhere we go. And that's where you and I can be involved and really get this stuff done and be a blessing to so many people. I got to get to verse 25. Not forsaking the south, the for gathering, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as we see the day approaching, saying, let's get together. Come join us. Do you remember? How refreshing this was when you first started coming here. It is very refreshing to every one of you. Why? Because all of a sudden you're starting to hear a whole bunch of things about God that you always believed and nobody said. Mm-hmm. Bless you, Sunday. We love you. Chris, I don't know if you're still there, but we bless you too. Blog Talk Radio folks, we bless you. Good to have you with us tonight. Now watch. Good. What about the good what about the group? Right? What about the group that's for those ornery husband wives? All right, how about that group? <laughs> Love you, Mary. Say it. We got to exhort one another. All the more as we see the day approaching. That's what the value of what we do here is, and it can be such a blessing to you. Remember, Memorial Day is to honor the fallen. So that's not a day when you walk around and say to military type people, happy Memorial Day. That's not happy to them. Because most of them have lost a, a loved one, a brother, somebody, they know somebody that, that fell in battle. So the, that's not a word we say. You don't say happy Memorial Day. You say thank you for your service on that day. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And that way you're not trying to bless. You're not trying to say, I'm happy somebody died. Now, most people don't understand this fact and they don't realize it's there because nobody like me has ever sat down and taught a lesson like this saying, wait, let's get a bigger, broader understanding of this so that we're not saying or doing things that, that hurt that people's hurt feelings. People, yeah. Amen. Yeah. No matter how many, no matter, no matter how much, let's see. Every one of us have lost somebody close to us. Everyone. Mm-hmm. Not every one of us have lost someone who went to fight the battle and willingly gave up their life to face an enemy. Not every one of us fought that. Right. Now, you don't worship them. They don't want you to worship them. But they appreciate the honor mm-hmm. that you show to them And the easiest thing in the world to do is just shake your hand and say, thank you for your service to this great nation. And now you have been totally prepared and you know exactly what you must do. Let's deal with these last three verses. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. That's even a police officer. Jesus said, Everyone who gives up father, mother, sister, brother, houses, and lands for my sake in the gospel will in this lifetime reap a hundredfold return and eternal life. There's a lot of veterans, a lot of people who gave their life in battle that their family now needs breakthrough to come to them. Listen to my hometown warrior care prayers that I pray every day, and you'll hear all of this doctrine being spoken over and over and over again every day. And there is no greater love that a man would lay down his life for a friend. And you can look at you can look at veterans and say, God doesn't judge you. He loves you. Let me be the minister of reconciliation to help you understand 
our Father is standing there to wipe away all of that guilt. Yeah. And and no, he will not charge you guilty with any of it. And he wants to be there and be a blessing to you. Now, one more time I'll say it. Is it wrong to have a barbecue on Memorial Day? No, it's not. They, they served so that that can happen yes. in freedom and in liberty, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with playing and having fun and going boating and skiing and the rest of it. The point we're trying to make is make sure at, at 1,100 hours straight up, you stop it for a moment and honor them. You, you, you stop and honor them. You might not even be able to get to a, an event. But you can stop at 11 o'clock and sing the Star Spangled Banner, say the Pledge of Allegiance. And if anybody's with you, say, let's pray for the families of the fallen today and say a prayer. And it'll be a blessing. We'll have a prayer up on that day. You can go open up Hometown Warrior Care and say, and listen to Pastor Sam pray. And turn it on and I'll do the prayer. It's just a matter of saying, I choose to honor and respect those who live. Right. Right. And um, you'll be a blessing to many people. And you know what? What have we done? We are strengthening America at the very basis of everything that needs to be strengthened. Because what's provided us our liberty and our freedom is the men and women who are willing to serve Ronald Reagan said, freedom has to be fought for in every generation. It is not just handed down through the genes. And he said, and if it's not, the day will come in America where we'll sit on our front porch, tell our children what it once was like to be free in the United States of America. We're a whole lot closer to it today than I think Ronald Reagan ever thought was going to be possible in the next hundred years after he had served. Here's the idea. Say it with me. Don't touch God's anointing. Touch God's anointing. We are not yeah. surrendering this nation. We're not surrendering who we are. We do not surrender to anyone. And you and I are doing it in the realm of the spirit like the bravest of warriors in the realm of the spirit every keep every single day. And I thank you for standing with us. You ready? Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, right here, right now, today. Right now, today. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you for these people, Lord, the believers here. Thank you, Lord, for, for, for providing this venue to speak your word, to speak these truths, and to see your work accomplished right here. Lord, help us to be a blessing in our local communities. Help us to take all of this word that we're getting in our heart and share it with many other people all around us. In the mighty name of Jesus, help us, Lord, to be faithful to your word every single day. Yes. Every single day. Lord, guide us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. And I pray, Lord, that you open up a place for each of these to serve beyond anything that they've ever even thought was possible. Yes, and their gifts and their talents and their abilities will be completely used by you. We give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus.
Amen. And amen. And amen. Yeah, Brother Chris, we did. Amen. That's a good statement. And now, let's go to communion. The new covenant worship. It's good night. Got a lot done and a lot said. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 11. Sister Leanne has put a, a list of verses in there. And um, I encourage you to copy those down so you have reference of them in the mighty name of Jesus. So you can go back and you can see them again. Um, I always copy them and put them in my notes because even though I'm reading verses from my notes, I always have more verses than what's in the notes. And so this helps me put the verses right in order. And then God's blessed sister Wilma with a gift to help us. And she helps us. And we thank you. Bless you, Wilma. We love you. We appreciate you being with us. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30, 28, verse 31. Here we go. For I received from the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he blessed it, he broke it and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink this, drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and as often as you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's redemptive work until he comes. Verse 28. Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. First John chapter 4. Verse 17, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Verse 18, there is no fear in love. Perfect love cast out fear and the torment that goes with it. Verse 19. We love him because he first loved us. Thank you, Jesus. Say it with me. There is no fear. There is no fear. In the communion there service. Communion. There's no fear. Why? Because anybody who shows up to receive communion... As soon as you examine yourself, there's no reason to be afraid. If you show up here with some kind of an arrogant attitude about God or church or communion, well, you're already in trouble with God anyways. So why don't you just do the right thing? Examine yourself and get out of trouble. And there's no fear. Amen. Amen. Anybody who's right with God and serving him with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, there's no reason to be afraid because there's no fear in this. God 
took Jesus through all the punishment for a very specific purpose. Very specific. And Jesus took all the punishment so you and I don't have to take any of it. And all we do is say, I receive you. And that makes you right with him. Amen. Pastor, don't you think that's pretty simple? simplified? Well, yeah, he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. What about Jesus with those people on the side of the road? Your sins be forgiven you. Go and sin no more. They, there's no record that many of them even said, forgive me of my sin. Blind Bart said that I might receive my sight. And he said, your sins be forgiven. Go and sin no more. And be made whole. Well, hallelujah. That might be what we ought to be doing too. What do you reckon? Just following in Jesus' footsteps. Hearing the voice of the Father. And doing what he gives us to do. In Jesus' mighty name. You ready? Let's pray. The prayer of self-examination, prayer of salvation, the prayer of rededication, whatever it needs to be for you. Pray this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I come to you right now. I come to you right now. I know I need you in every part of my life. I know I need you in every part of my life. And Jesus, I receive you. And Jesus, I receive you. Because you are the door to salvation. Because you are the door to salvation. And according to John chapter 1, and according to John chapter one when I believe in you and receive you, when I believe in you and receive you, you give me the power. You give me the power. You make me a child of God. You make me a child of God. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't that something? It just fills you. Do this. Take your sin and just pile them up. Say, there's all my sin. There's all my sin. I can't beat it. I can't beat it. Hold your hands out and say, I receive all of your righteousness. I receive all of your righteousness. Filling every part of my life. Filling every part of my life. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the word of God. Pray in my heavenly language. Pray in my heavenly language. And live a successful life. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer every day. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Just like that, you are now a child of God. Just like that, you are born again. Just like that, you change kingdoms. You went from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. screenshot. <laughs> I, I see Velma posted screenshot. <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> screenshot. Watch this. You literally went from being bound by your sin, which no human has any human ability to beat. The only way anybody's ever got into the kingdom of God is they accepted the work that Jesus did. You went from darkness to light. And here's the coolest thing. The Father said to Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, adopt them into the family. Make them my children. And you're adopted in. You're not part of the vine. You've been grafted in. And you literally are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus with an inheritance that is incorruptible and fades not away. Pastor, this is a whole lot more in a communion service than anything I'm used to. Yeah, that's true. However, you understand a whole lot more about God in communion coming out of this communion service, don't you? What are we giving you? Wisdom and knowledge and understanding in the name of Jesus.
Are you ready? They put my email address and website in there so that you have, you can contact us and you can ask us questions say, what's going on? I got 10 verses I want to send you. They're the most stable foundation verses that you could ever have or need for your Christian life. And I encourage you to get them, study them, memorize them. And then I'll send you an email. You send me one. And I'll send you one. You send me one. And that's the process that we'll use and we'll grow and develop in God using all of this great word that God has given us right here to be a blessing to you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Isn't it awesome? Mm -hmm. God's got a wonderful plan. Here we go. Grab your communion elements and let's receive communion together. Pray this with me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of I Jesus. bless these elements I bless these for elements. this time of communion with you. For this time of communion with you. Jesus, you were wounded. Jesus, you were wounded. For my transgression. For my transgression. You were bruised. You were bruised. For my iniquity. For my iniquity. The chastisement. The Chastisement for my peace, for my peace is, upon you, Lord. is upon you, Lord, and by your stripes, and by your stripes I, am healed. I am healed in my spirit, in my soul, and in my body, in my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. in my mind, my will, and my emotions, in my mind, my will, and my emotions. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Every joint supply in my body, in my body, from your body, Jesus, from your body, Jesus, in the body of Christ in my community, in the body of Christ in my community, and right here in this community of faith, and right here in this community of faith, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Amen. Let's receive His broken body today. Thank you, Lord, for the connection to the body of Christ in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And now we lift up the cup of blessing. The blood of Jesus, the most powerful cleansing force there is on the face of this earth. Pray this with me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have reconciliation. I have reconciliation. With you, my father. With you, my father. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every sin. Every sin. Has been placed in remission. Has been placed in remission. In my life. In my life. I am a new creation. I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away. And all things have become new. And all things have become and new. And I thank you for it. And I thank you. For By it. the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Don't you just love it? Mm -hmm. Every plague. Every plague has to pass over. Has to and pass cannot over. be on me or my family. And cannot be on me or my family. By the blood of Jesus. By I come, I come boldly to the throne room of grace, room where, of I grace, grace where I find grace, mercy, and help for my assignment every day. By the blood of Jesus and the word of my testimony, the word of my testimony I, overcome. I overcome by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of the accuser of the brethren, the of the brethren is cast down forever, cast and, down there forever. No and there is no more condemnation. My conscience is purged. My, is purged. My, robes are made white. My robes are made white. And I will always be, will always be the glorious church, glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. Spot, or any other when blemish. you come for me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen and amen. Let's receive the juice together in Jesus' mighty name.
In Jesus mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. Now, we always sing a song. I like that song we've been playing. I've been playing in our worship time about the blood. You've been enjoying that one? I have. I just don't have it down good enough. But I like it. I've been saved. I've been washed. I've been sanctified. Da, 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 da. And water baptized. I am one with my God for all of time. And Jesus, my Savior, is mine. It's a good song, isn't it? It is. I like it. Holy, holy, this is what we call holy. Glory, glory, this is what we call glory. Well, if you haven't been listening to the music, the cool thing about um, the messenger thread for the tent meeting is that link is still there. Now, I, I know that you probably noticed today we changed the um, order of some of those songs. And I've, I think I got like five hours of music in that one list now. So every time you listen to it, it's going to be in a different order. But here's the cool thing. It's still sitting there. Anytime you want to turn it on, you click that button, it's going to take you right back into that music again, and you'll be able to go through it. You can actually move uh, forward. If there's a song you're like, well, this one isn't my song, you can move it forward and go to the next one. And there's a couple really good sets of worship time. There's some of them are 20 minutes long and we encourage you to get in there and enjoy it and let it be a blessing to you um, because that's what God wants it to be. And what is it doing? It's getting us focused in on some really good revival tent meeting songs so that when we get to the tent of meeting, we are, we got some good list of songs to sing that really usher in the presence of almighty God. And then, of course, as in, in any meeting, God get, begins to give you new songs that have never been written, and we just stand there and sing them in the spirit. And that is an amazing thing also in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Well, that's what we got for tonight. Brother Dan, you want to say hi or anything? Sister Phyllis, you want to say hi or anything? Just click the one button and we'll come to you. That's what that's all about over there. What a deal we got going. Audrey, bless you. Velma, we bless you. We're going to call her Screenshot Velma. <laughs> we bless you and Joy and Mikey and Claire. May God bless you and strengthen you. Anything we can ever do to help you, we will. We'll be in contact with you here, and we'll have a meeting where we can all get together and begin to make some of this stuff come out like it needs to. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Are we still live? Everybody seemed to went quiet. Or am I just not getting any of the post? <laughs> That seems to happen on a regular basis. That uh, everybody's just ready for all of a sudden, <laughs> I'm I'm um, just not getting anything, and uh, you guys are talking away, having a great conversation, and it just isn't showing up here. Hey, bless you, Velma. We love you. God bless you guys. We certainly love you in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. All right. Well, here we go. 
Till we see you again tomorrow at noon. This is what we have to say. We love you. We love you. And God, and loves, God you. loves you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Now that's the first close. Father, we bless Julian and Vamala with great strength and power and courage in their bodies and in their souls. We bless Mary Fernandez yes. with the courage and strength of Almighty God inside of her spirit, her soul, and her body. In the mighty name of Jesus. We bless Kathy Angaroni. We bless Chris and Sunday and Dane. We bless these families with the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and add, adds no sorrow with it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Brother Dan, bless you. Sister, Sister Phyllis, bless you. Mary, Pastor Rick. I don't know. Audrey Van Gessel, bless you. I think that's all of them that I saw. Chris Timmer, I bless you. Brother Ken Brumbaugh was with us way in the beginning. If you're still with us. In the mighty name of Jesus. All right. Closing number two. This is what we say. We love you. And God, and God loves, loves you. you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord.